Lace up those boots and stretch those glutes. It's time for the Wrestling Compadres with your hosts, Dale Rutledge, Scott Narva and Jake Lloyd. What a week of wrestling it has been and what an apropos name for a pay-per-view called Backlash that it did yet receive that from the internet wrestling community and probably some from this show a little bit later on. So it's Scott here along with Jake. And man, we got a show for you. We've got a bunch of hotline calls. We're thrilled that those are here. And also we got to thank our compadres announcer, the dumpster monster at the performance center thank you so much dumpster monster you are so great and finally you got your big debut there uh good job a huge star in the making huge it's 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 no motorcycle ninjas but it's pretty big it's pretty big because all we saw was the tentacle so aka we got a lot to get into your tail <laughs> How are you doing? Everything healthy and good on your end? Yeah, as good as can be. You know, listen, we already had our big pre-show talk. If you uh, if you're not on the Palski, if you're not on the Patreon, rather, you're not a Palski. Yeah, we got in some shit, some shit in the pre-show this week. We talked about how fat I was, and uh, we talked and how about, fat you're gonna be. We talked about how fat I'm gonna be. <laughs> Other than that, doing great, Scotty. Yeah, it's great that you're eating ice cream by the handful as we're recording this. Well, uh, I'm not gonna use a spoon, and I have to wash it. <laughs> yeah my hands real good the way it is you get me this is immediately a better segment for otis than what they're doing on television uh dale rollage is not with us this week he's uh off doing work stuff so follow him on the walking dale on social media but now we got to get into it let's get into the slam cast news <laughs> We got some sightings, uh, as we saw in AEW this week. We had two people that made their debut on Dynamite. Uh, one had wrestled before on an episode of Dark, but that's Abaddon. Uh, that is a very unusual character. I don't think Abaddon has eyelids. Uh, Abaddon is crazy. Did you get to see Abaddon this week, Yeah. Jake? You, you'd yeah, know if you did. Yeah, no, I know. You know how I feel about these kind of characters. They're, they're just, your favorite. They're just they just love the Undertaker trying too hard. Not I'm not. I was immediately, I almost immediately checked out of just like I can't stand horror characters that aren't fun. Now hold on. I don't think you can say Abaddon's trying too hard when she doesn't even walk to the ring. <laughs> All right. You know what? Uh, I stand corrected. That's the laziest ring entrance I've ever seen. And that's a company with Orange Cassidy in it. That's a good point. Very good point. And Ricky Starks, NWA's own, uh, has jumped up to the bigger leagues now, uh, arguably. And uh, he has now signed a contract as well. So I'm sure we'll be talking more about that segment later. But congrats to both of them Absolutely. on getting signed. Uh, and then in other news, uh, Paul Heyman has been removed as executive director from Raw. Bruce Pritchard is now in charge of uh, the combined creative teams. They have merged, so he's 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 running things. And there's a there's an amazing meme going around. I don't know if you've seen it, Jake, with uh, Bruce Pritchard in a uh, Reaper outfit. No. And there's a door that says Eric Bischoff on it, and there's a blood trail out of it, and there's a door that says. <laughs> Uh, Paul Heyman and there's a blood trail running out of it and he's knocking on Triple H's door. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know what to think anymore. I'm exhausted. <laughs> well, don't worry. Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon will tell you. And if you don't like it, it's your problem because they're great. Ugh, I felt my soul leave a little bit when I said that. And uh, Oh, you haven't had a hey. soul for years. That's true. Uh, neither is this next person that's uh, tested positive for the coronavirus, right, Jake? Oh, yeah. Apparently, uh, as of last week, somebody from the NXT developmental, uh, what do you call it? Arena, the developmental talent. Crowd. Uh, yeah. Tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, WWE released an official statement. A developed, I'm quoting, a developmental talent who was last on site at WWE's facility on Tuesday, June 9th, has tested positive for COVID-19. Since that time, no other individuals have attended the facility 
that have attended the facility have reported any symptoms. However, out of an abundance of caution and to ensure the health and safety of the company's performers and staff, all talent, production crew, and employees on site at the training and production facilities will be tested again for COVID-19 immediately. Following the test results, they plan to proceed with normal television production. So apparently, once this person tested positive, they stop, retest everybody. But uh, one, sure. per- one person doesn't care. And that person is uh, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens did not attend Wednesday's tapings. Um, despite living in the area and being able to, he decided not to appear because of that person testing positive. Uh, it should be mentioned that unfortunately, Kevin Owens' wife's grandfather passed away from COVID-19 a couple weeks prior. So the uh, Owens family is obviously very concerned about him working in this building, and he is obviously a little bit more on edge. I think anybody who has a firsthand experience uh, with the disease is you know much more less likely to take any chances whatsoever i do not blame him one bit um it is just a series of unfortunate events again we live in a pandemic this is very real people this is very very real and uh, the more people gather the more the shit's gonna happen it's just the way it is people gathering unsafely without masks and i get that wb is doing a good job of testing people just like aw is doing a great job of testing people like there, there people are taking precautions but that's not a disease doesn't care about your precautions precautions aren't yeah. guarantees they're exactly that like we are there's contingency and you still live your life on top of that like yep. you're exactly. not only in the performance center and locked exactly. down there or your family you got to go get supplies and do this Which, and that and to if, uh, owens credit um and to anybody who has a loved one in their life that is not in the industry that they're in where they're always looking out for the person that they're with and his wife is probably like hey you're not going to fucking work. Yeah. You're not going to go and wrestle people. You're going to go, you're going to stay at home. You're going to be fine. And we're going to be safe. Yeah. And he's going to go, well, I got it. All right. You're right. Yeah. You know, it's uh, also, this actually brings up another great point, And that is people that aren't necessarily taking the pandemic seriously or that think that it's over or think that, oh, that was two months ago. We're done with that now. Like here's a company who's in the public eye. Right. Who, a publicly traded company who has money on the line like this is this is capitalism at work here. They are taking more precautions than many other people out there than other businesses are to the point where they're getting tests regularly, consistently, and they still had someone test positive. If that doesn't show you just how hard of a, a thing that this uh, disease is to control. Then I don't know what does like here's a company that's doing everything right and still somebody's going to test positive. Like that's just how invasive, a, you know, something like this well, pandemic is. They're in developmental, Jake. I mean, come on. They weren't ready for the main roster. They clearly can't cut it because they got COVID. I, I uh, don't sign off on that statement in any way, shape or form. <laughs> um, with that I'm just said, trying to though, jump ahead of the wrestling community. Well, uh, that's all. with that said, Owens is expected to be at the next raw tapings that are going to happen on June 29th. So, you know, he's got 10 days from now um, and hopefully by that point, everybody's been retested and he feels comfortable coming back. And if not, whatever, we don't get Owens. I love him. I want him on my TV. He's one of my favorite things on Raw. He's one of my favorite things about Raw. But if he's not there because he doesn't feel safe, more power to him. I'm happy. But that shouldn't restrict. I mean, if we have the all powerful creative Bruce Pritchard in charge, oh, that man. doesn't mean that Owens can't do anything for God's sakes. He has a phone and he can shoot vignettes and promos and all kinds of stuff. Like you're doing it with Ray Mysterio right now with yeah. his, you know, so-called yeah. eye injury, wherever the hell he is. It doesn't matter. Although he's, these people can still be on television, still be involved in stuff. The idea of like Sami Zayn is at home and he can't do anything or be on t- TV. That's absurd. Everyone should be utilized. still. if you're hiring them and you can be creative and tell them like, do something fun on your phone, send it into us. And we'll work it in. Yeah. It's uh, it doesn't seem to be all that complicated in 2020. If this happens even 10, 15 years ago, You'd be like screwed. It'd be like, well, if we can't, if you can't get to the studio, then we've got nothing for you. But in 20, absolutely in twenty twenty, there's no excuse. I'm keeping up my end of the show of compadres recording on my end. Yeah, I if was gonna I say I can do this. I was gonna say let's let's be specific with our words. You're keeping up your end of the technical part of the show. Yes, beyond yes. that. Well, and also the words. I, I'm I'm using all the words that I wrote down way beforehand. Oh, all of them. Every one of them. 
Every single one of them, including oh. these right now, and that's a period. Oh, it's weird then, that you uh, knew I was going to ask that. Finally in the news, Randy Orton and the Ciampa NXT story continues. We talked about the leg slap uh, tweets and uh, my daughter can't sleep tweets right. between Ciampa and Orton from yeah. last week. He did an interview with CBS uh, News. CBS Sports News, rather. CBS News doesn't give a fuck about Randy Orton. <laughs> We're going to take a break right now from the rising uh, you know, revolution that's happening in the streets of America to see what Randy Orton has to say about NXT. So uh, that's such a deep dive of a story. He gave this really at length interview uh, and, and really uh, personal insight to his career, to other wrestling careers, and to NXT that I think is a bigger discussion than what we can provide here right. so we'll be making a special patreon episode for that so yeah i reason to sign up for the patreon i'm really interested to see the fine details stripping away the gimmick of like oh i'm gonna bust your balls because it's social media or you know like there's a difference between being critical of something from an artistic and personal standpoint and simultaneously taking pot shots at them which is what i have no doubt that if you know or in and Champa like sat down, they'd probably be friendly and be fine. And they, they, they're all in the same business. I think a part of that is just because they know it's on social media and they know that it's fun to, you know, uh, well, and then Champa would go like, oh, it's good to meet you and talk. And then he walks away and grabs his bag and he goes, Oh, oh what'd you do? No, Orton? he did it. Oh, he got man. me. Thanks, Alexander. So, Alexander. Uh, Alexander has brought me a fresh cup of coffee in our wrestling compadres mug available right now at dragonwagonshop.com. I'm showing it to you. That's a mean mug in, on our mug. I'm showing it to you on the Zoom like I'm presenting it as if we've ever recorded this video and anybody other than you will see it. Did you enjoy that? I like Vanna White did that for you. I was going to see if I could do a screen grab. I realized I didn't know how to do it on my yeah, iPad. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to do it on a Kindle. Technology! No, wait. I, mm, oh, I think I do now. Oh, do wait it again. Okay. I dare you. I got to move my big dumb hand out of the way of the camera. Great. Yeah, do it. I'll look, I'll try to find the lens of this Kindle. This is making great, excellent audio. Oh, wait, you went away. You're just a logo now. <laughs> yep. It didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> oh, it's falling apart, folks. Listen, this is uh, never together. Oh, see, did you, are you, you're constantly going back and forth between you, your palm, I'm saying the camera engine, which is mostly your palm, and then an animation of you or a, an illustration of you in Dave Made a Maze, available now, uh, wherever you find movies, I guess. Who doesn't love physical comedy on a podcast? Who? Oh. Uh, who, who, who? See, we made it about wrestling, and that's what matters. I did a New Day thing. We brought it all back. We're professionals here at Wrestling Compadres, and don't uh, let anybody tell you otherwise. Yeah, especially us. And that's Slamcast News. AEW Dynamite. In the upcoming weeks, we have Fighter Fest coming up on July 1st and July 8th. And we've got a few matches set for that. Uh, mostly title matches, but uh, one other match as well. Orange Cassidy versus Chris Jericho. Um, match of the night. With, match no of the year. The match of the decade. That's going to be cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm calling it. I don't know if you put that on the first <gasps> night or the second night. I don't know when you do that. Oh, do you want to know what they should do? What? They should bill that as the greatest wrestling match of all time. Ooh, of all time. Of all time. Not ever, but of all time. No. I I would dare even say say the bestest wrestling <gasps> the match. The bestest wrestlingest matchist. <laughs> Of all ever. Um, jokes aside, that match is going to be fucking fantastic. I'm excited about that. What are the other matches on the uh, on the Fighter Fest card? Fighter Fest. Uh, Cody versus Jake Hager for the TNT Championship. Okay. Hikaru Shida versus Penelope Ford uh, for the AEW Women's Championship. Penelope Ford, she's growing on me in the ring. I've always been fascinated with her. She has just this cool factor I've talked about. I just think she's great, bad, bad guy wrestler. Um but she's bad gal, bad gal wrestler. Well, you know, it's a, it's for me, it's all the same. Um, I don't see gender. Um, <laughs> I was going to add to that. And I realized to stop, stop while you're not ahead. Uh, and I think that she's coming along in the ring in the past few weeks, but this seems like a weird spot for her to be in. That's considering the talent pool that they've got. I, this feels like a, we don't really have much else. 
I don't know. They're running with the the super bad squad pretty hard. So yeah, you know, go for it. Yeah, and I mean, you, I you know, you need your story. initial opponents when right. you're when you're Sheeta. And I, I feel and the same you, way about Hagar. Like I don't think there's a world where Hagar is going to lose or going to win against Cody. But right, it feels like oh, this we've is also got first opponent. We've also got John Moxley versus Brian Cage for the AEW World Championship. Yeah, another. I just don't care about Cage. Sure, this is tough because I feel like this pay per view, those matches, the only one that I'm like really like, oh, this is going to be great is is going to be Jericho and Orange because I don't think the other matches have wheels really. What about tags? Are we going to get the uh, the tag titles defended? We are, but that's to be uh, determined because best uh, friends. Oh no, best... wait, it has been determined now. Oh wait, it was that's at right. The, end of the, the show, main event was. So the... I just didn't update it. The best friends put their right. their number one contendership on the line against less sex gods, right? Correct. So we will get Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega. Oh, who, by the way, his lower third this week was uh, need, Adam Page's was. Oh, don't need a hat to be a cowboy. That's right. Yeah, I remembered it. Um, so good. I didn't need to write it down. So they will be fighting best friends. They, they made, put their number one contendership on the line. I was so sure it was going to be lost, but nope, they retained so it. In uh, it, in full disclosure, I watched the f- most of the first half of Dynamite, and then the second half was while we were setting up and doing our pre-show. So I had the sound off, and I was mostly looking at you on the Zoom and chatting and being on the computer. So I I kept looking up and catching glimpses, but I didn't catch the fine details of the latter half of this episode. Right. Um. So in Dynamite, I definitely have a couple of contenders of things I'd, lo- I'd love to talk about or that were favorites, but I'll, I'll flat out go with my favorite thing of the week. And this was this was difficult because there was already one I, I, when watching the show. I'm like, oh, this is it. There's no question. They right. can't be more topped than this. But sure enough, it was again with Cody's segment. Cody's promo with Arn Anderson was outstanding. Arn Anderson also getting to say something where it's like, oh, good. He earned his money on camera. Good. <laughs> right. Finally, You're, you are here for more than just the whole uh, being a whole lot of meat. Yeah. Ho- holding the clipboard. Right. Um, I like the idea of Arn Anderson picked his opponent and it's someone to test his skills. Right. And then we get the video package of Ricky Starks, Ricky Starks. who we've talked about on the show from NWA and it was a great video package. It was really exciting. And you got to hear some of the story. And then when he came to the ring, damn, man, it, it really gave me goosebumps because as he, when he hit the turnbuckle, he had a tear that had rolled down his cheek and you couldn't see it on his face necessarily, but it was clearly a, he was emotional about right, it and yeah. was really happy to be there. And in a prime spot where you're going to be fighting your boss for the title. Yeah. Ricky Starks is an interesting character because he is a flashy, like, you know, uh, I'm better than everybody. I've got what it takes. I'm super cocky, yet simultaneously, I'm really proud to be here and I'm emotional. Like, he's he he walks that line really well. He did, he did it even in NWA. Mm-hmm. He did it where he would. In fact, I think at first we we talked about how we didn't feel like he knew where his promo lived. Was he was he funny and insulting right. the guy interviewing him, or was no. he being sincere? No, I'm saying like we didn't know, like he yeah. didn't know where he lied, and then he then he right. uh, over the weeks he found that nice balance of like taking pot shots and being humorous because we're all having a good time, but simultaneously this is serious, and he found that. And now this yeah. was the more serious version overall. Like he yeah. even stepped it up a little bit further. Yeah. So it, it's great to see the growth and development over the time in NWA. The, the amount of talented people that he worked with cultivating that character. And I'm sure he's done it long before on the Indies and stuff too. That's what got him in the door there. Right. And it's, it's just fine tuning and fine tuning. And uh, he had a really great showing him and Cody had a great match, especially for two guys that there's no way these guys had wrestled before. Right. They can't, um, they can't possibly have, I mean, maybe when Cody, maybe like around the time when Cody had the, the NWA title, maybe they had met, on some indie shows. But I feel like Cody was so high profile at that point that all of his competitors, all of the people he was in matches with were all like pretty big names, even in the indies. And Ricky Starks was never that name. Yeah. But so I agree. They, I'm sure they've met and they probably chatted and uh, it was, it was great. They did a really good match and they told a really great story. I thought everything leading up to it was, it was outstanding and for the title as well. 
Yeah, the TNT like, Championship. Uh, and so that just the idea that like, hey, Arn picked his guy not because it's a fun exhibition spar, but like I picked a guy who very well might beat you for this title right now. Yeah, Hager's yeah. Hager down the line, but right. right now this is this is what you got to deal with. And yeah. he was tested, and Ricky Starks had a good showing, and they Cody always has this moment at the end with his with his opponents where you know he he shook his hand and gave him props which helped build both guys up more. Right. And then on social media, seeing Tony Khan saying like, oh, he did an outstanding job. And while he may not have won the TNT championship, he won a contract here at AEW and right. they posted about it. I just thought like, wow, this is a really great way to introduce the character. Really great way to keep the open challenge going. And it was how I talked about previously. It's like, if it's not the main event of the show, it's the co-main event of the show. Yeah. It's at the hour mark. Like, yeah, this is just a great way to keep the excitement going of that title for Cody, for the person in that spot. And at some point, as you alluded to, it's going to happen at right. some point. Yeah, someone's going to be Cody happen. for that title. Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to that. Look forward so to that. That was great. Hopefully being a surprise on TV and not on a pay-per-view. Right. Cause I actually would yeah. prefer that to not even be defended on pay-per-view. If you're going to call it the TNT title, it's weird not to have it change hands on TNT. That'd be a great time to be in a tag match with somebody. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yep. Still being involved in the NA match, but your title's not in line. It's like, look, I, I do this every fucking week or on the TV or show. Make it a point to have a like TNT title number one contenders match on every pay per view. And so it's sure. like that. We, we're going to find out who's going to face him this Wednesday night. If it's if every pay per view is on Saturday idea. or Sunday, like that's the idea. Like, and it's just like, a, hey, as, as always on every pay-per-view we're going to find out who's facing cody this week on this week's tv um you know because ultimately it is the tnt title but um the fighter fast gets a pass because it is on tnt so that's not you know like luckily sure even though this is kind it's an of event a, yeah it's an event not a pay-per-view exactly which is also uh, I, it, which also i think saves some of the other matches that i feel like are a little bit more lackluster like a penelope ford fighting for that title like yeah that's it, it's fighter fest but it's also dynamite fighter fest you know Right. Britt Baker was pretty damn funny this week uh, with some of those notes uh, when she wrote about Abaddon. That girl needs to find Jesus. <laughs> there <laughs> was a lot of if you haven't seen this curse, yeah, what Britt Baker did. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say like I just I there were times where I kind of like looked up and I saw the gimmick and I saw a couple of the notes, but there were times where I wasn't paying attention. I just heard incessant censoring. Mm-hmm. what was yeah. that who was being censored was it brit being censored as she was writing stuff or or her assistant I, I i don't know i don't know if it was someone in the crowd just swearing a lot i i wasn't sure but the the whole thing of the 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 role model right being parked next to the uh, commentator's table so good and there's a and there's this pulley system where she was handwriting notes and then delivering them to Tony Schiavone, who's reading them. Which, by the way, during the, the matches, this pulley system is like what you would see in like a 1940s diner. Like it's how they uh-huh. would, it's how like you would get an order and you'd pull the string. It's like a you know essentially it's a a, a clothing line and you'd uh, yeah you know not a clothesline uh, for wrestling, but uh, and you'd like slide the clothesline and it would you know. Uh, find its way to the cook who would pull the paper down and in this instance you know she was making orders and uh shivani was the cook it was so funny i yeah. i this is the this is the most i've like liked Britt baker so far i thought it was a little too much at the end to follow up with her in the dumpster the dumpster was thankfully silly. there was not a dumpster monster in there Whew. uh yeah, i mean we I don't know that it might have just been a he might have been sleeping you don't know she, I don't know why it has a gender. That's true. It might have been sleeping. You don't know. Who knows? There might have been a dumpster. There might have been five dumpster monsters in there. You're right. I, I don't know. I don't know the origin of the dumpster monster. Maybe Britt Baker is the dumpster monster. Maybe it's in the new game WWE Battlegrounds and they're trying to introduce it. Early. Oh my God. I hope so. I mean, wait a minute. Hang on. All right. I know that we're not talking about it yet. We'll get there. But simultaneously, <laughs> the, the quote tentacle was clearly just the tail end of of a fake alligator okay and in the video game commercial we have seen you can throw john cena into an alligator there has right? to be some sort of connection here oh my god if there's not it's like they didn't see what they had <laughs> i hate everything um <laughs> anyways so uh yeah Britt baker being on i so, since i didn't see the entire episode i think uh Britt baker m- might be moment 
outside of the that opening tag match, which was great, and then the dust up, everything was. I mean, they just do tag wrestling very fun. I still think that they have yeah. they they've gotten a little bit better about the tag count problem that they had when they started with like you have a 10 count to get out of the ring like where every match was just mm-hmm. a tornado tag i feel like they've gotten a lot better about that where it doesn't feel as much like it's a lawless tag team there's still a little bit of it but ultimately you know they, they just put on great tag matches they tell great stories whenever more than two people are involved yeah that along with um you know, we'll move past it, but I thought all the entire MGF Wardlow, Billy and the guns, very fun. And eventually Jurassic express. Like I thought that was outstanding. I thought that was really good too. That was my initial favorite. And yeah, everything was great in there. MGF, <laughs> I loved, Billy, all I, I, elements of, I even loved Marco. That's how you use an older guy. I even loved Marco stunt jumping over onto Wardlow's back. <laughs> like a goddamn yeah. spider monkey. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, great, great segments throughout the show this week. A lot of fun interviews. Uh, also, really, uh, we really talk, fun watch. We talked about, um, you know, things that AEW does really well, which is the AEW universe. I don't have a name for it, but, you know, WWE has trained us, so that's what I'm calling it. Um, and right. that is, I, uh, I, as much as I don't like, uh, what's her name? I'm a something around. I'm a terrible horror character. What's her name? Uh, clearly not Anna J because you love her. Well, I did. Uh, <laughs> Abaddon. Abaddon. Um, so uh, I this is a series of events that I did enjoy. I enjoyed Anna J getting this like big promo about how she's here to entertain and then getting immediately squashed in the next segment. <laughs> right. Um, but then the connection of all of the moving pieces existing in the same spot. We've got, you know, Mr. Brody Lee coming out primarily to offer what seems to be a contract of some sort to Colt Cabana, but taking that moment to also help Anna J who is still in the ring out of the ring. There's all of these moving pieces that are involved so many different people and they used like, we can all argue that every wrestling show is too long these days. When AEW power started, we were like, Oh my God, this is the best. It's an hour long. We don't need more NWA than this. Power. And um, yeah, what did I say? AEW, AEW power. power. I, sorry. Um, so when power started, we were like, this is the best one could argue yep. that. Yeah. Three hour raw is insufferable, but even two hours is kind of tough. Still, it's still a lot of time. Yes. Um, and AW has taken three, a three or four minute segment and done something with four or five characters that no two are necessarily related immediately. And it's something that's just right. so great. It's, we need more of that. Like involve other people. There's progression. There's progression and there's intrigue. And the, and all you're doing is laying seeds. Those seeds don't even need to grow. We we don't even we don't ever need to see Anna J and the Dark Order uh, in a segment ever again. That's fine. But if we do, that's also great. Yeah, it's um even from the standpoint of when I every week when we do the show, we do a rundown like we compile everything that happens from the shows and write it down on a sheet of paper that we can look at for reference and talk about the stuff. So I love writing all of these different names and characters and tag teams and stables down for AEW. When I do it for raw, I'm writing the same names over and over and over again. And then I'm debating to like, should I include that they talked for the third time backstage right here (laughs) and say that like nothing happened like it, it becomes a weird thing where it you when you just see it over and over again, you go, God, it, it's just so repetitive. But they're utilizing, as Jake is alluding to, like the, the, it's so much. It's, yeah. it's so many people that we get the variety show. It's, we get all the acts. It's every player on that chessboard. Like it's every teammate. It's every everything. So and um, it's crazy now. On top of that, uh, briefly, uh, the elite is back. Like yeah. We were without the Bucks and Hangman and a Page for a, a long time during the during the first part of the quarantine, which is kind of weird when it's like, hey, this is your fucking company. If this was 10 years ago, you'd be like, I'm not missing a day. I'm not doing that. Oh, we got families now. So fuck that yeah. noise. We're, we're going to be at home. And I love uh, I love that moment with the uh, FTR and the Bucks both doing their, you know, two on one moves. Um, I, I really, I'm really enjoying this FTR boxing cause it's, it's not, ex- it's not at all what we anticipated it was going to be, I think. And that's fun. Mm-hmm. That's, it's fun that it's surprising and that it's unique. So your favorite moment 
Abaddon? <sighs> yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I, it's hard not to say that Baker just wasn't so fun. Um, and again, I only caught the first half, but it, it might just be that opening tag match just because it was just a blast. And sure. then the big dust up is just fun. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Tough me to pick a favorite moment without seeing the rest of the show. But yeah, I'll go Baker's little pulley system. <laughs> she hates my green tie. <laughs> great and then uh we got nxt this week uh man what a what a great kickoff to the show of imperium versus oh, not imperium so much fun i uh i love that alexandra <laughs> who i had not seen the brazango comeback nor the brazango promo last week where they screwed up the names of imperium and called them fabio and uh, marsupial <laughs> yeah. i loved her because she heard Imperium's music and she hadn't watched a lot of NXT or NXT UK recently. And so she, she immediately said, wait, is this Walter's music? And then I went, yeah, this is his group, Imperium. And she went, oh, that's right. Okay, great. And then that music ends and then it restarts again. <laughs> and then and the names <laughs> Fabio and Marsupio pop up on the screen. And like it was almost like when, uh, you know, like you, you ask a puppy a question and it's trying to triangulate its head to figure out what you're saying, that head tilt. Of like, wait, what the like, fuck is this now? <laughs> and, is it food? Is that yeah. a type of food? Yeah. And then once once uh, once they revealed that it was actually Brazango and the announcer said it, she just lost her shit. It was the funniest fucking thing. She's like, this yeah. is so good. And I was like, yeah, they come out in like ridiculous costumes. It's so funny. And I love that they carried a bit. Oh my god. Hey, look what you can do NXT and and WWE programming. Like you you can take a stupid little bit and carry it and do a great thing with it. Not not that they haven't and done then that. Have a great. But, but and then well. a great title match on top of it. Yeah, great match. And I love that they're commentary kudos for reiterating. Yeah, we're going to have a fun entrance and we're going to make you laugh. But then the bell rings and we're going to get business done. Like really, really fun. Yeah, that that, that for sure was a favorite for me because that, that's what I want. I want more of that. Uh, I want yeah. some levity and some fun in my NXT. Yeah, Um, I think that... Uh, when it comes to uh, the tag division, NXT has always just felt like it's shined for me personally. It's always been kind of my favorite thing about both NXT and NXT UK. And I think that to bring back Breezango, like they need to be in the forefront. It's like long overdue that they're the guys who carry it for a little while, because here you have two guys who are two individual stars who are squandered on the main roster in such a terrible way. And yeah, I'd love for them each to get a like NXT title shot, but it does feel like the ball has moved on a little bit. So I think that putting them in mm-hmm. the NXT, putting them in the NXT title picture is just the perfect place for them. Yeah, it was, it was, it was super fun. And also, cause it was kind of strange. I don't know if you noticed as, as well, but this week was just a lot of non matches. Everything was, yeah. So there's a rumor. Three minutes, two minutes. There's a rumor behind why that is. <gasps> what's that? What's that rumor? That um, one Vince McMahon has been unhappy with the NXT losing ratings battle, and that and uh, Vince McMahon is now getting more involved with NXT as a product. And apparently, that started this week. Wow. Well, thankfully, he's got Bruce Pritchard by his side. Yeah. And that's just going to go Let's just great. say, as somebody who's been flying the NXT banner since, you know, the fucking days of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Leo Kruger um, and the original Cassius Ono and skinny Cassius Ono. Um, and Boo! Some, and as somebody Boo! who... As somebody who... Bigger is better. Somebody who loves this, bre- this brand so very much, I am petrified. <laughs> so yeah so there's that um what did you think about i actually enjoyed the velveteen responding to <laughs> super creeper artist um i fucking love him so much dexter loomis is so goddamn fun dexter loomis like creeps over his shoulder in an interview and just dumps this lovely little photo that he drew of him and velveteen with the tag titles and velveteen says yeah. nope not interested that's rude. Um, <laughs> I I I I love the creativity behind. It's it's not it's not um, 
uh, late 90, early 90s where it's uh, like, hey, man, tell us a little bit about you. Like, oh, I like to paint. <gasps> then you're going to be the artiste and we're going to get right. you one of those little berets and we're going to get you right. this and the paints and all that. Like, no. Uh, oh, you were into horror stuff and creep character and all that. And then you've been doing the stalker thing before. Okay, great. Oh, and you fucking paint too. All right. Well, you're not going to do promos. Right. Like, we're not going to have you talk for a while. You're going to paint your promos. That's so fun. It's so fun. That's so fun. And it's actually I'm, been handled I'm anxious well. for him to talk. I'm it's the only thing that's a little weird about it to me, but maybe that's what makes it good is that it's weird is that they're caricatures. <laughs> like they're yeah. not, they're not like creepy it's photos. It's the theme park. Yeah, exactly. It looks like he works at fucking, you know, uh, fucking Knott's Berry <laughs> farm on his weekends. <laughs> you draw characters of fucking, you know, uh, tourists who pay, you know, $25 plus tip. Yeah, like, oh, do you like skateboarding? Do you like skateboarding? No. <laughs> I'm going to draw you on skateboards. I'm going to put you a giant head and a little tiny skateboard and a little tiny. Oh, you and you like to draw? We're going to put a pencil in your hand. Um, yeah. Uh, it's it's because it, it, it's so opposite of what, what the persona is, yeah. where it's, I see things light and fun. But in addition to all of that, um, like the actual cartoon responses... Like the, like the meaning the cartoon promos like the fact that that's how he's responding kind of just makes him more creepy instead of yes because it means that in his mind he's playful yes I agree yes absolutely uh, that he he has a he thinks in cartoon which is kind of terrifying <laughs> but I mean are we not supposed to it's kind of uh, how I think but uh, yeah overall there there was some there wasn't. You know, there was some decent stuff on NXT this week, but it definitely, like you said, it felt like a lot of talking, and ultimately it led to, uh, um, uh, let's just talk about the the match that was made for the titles for this men's singles titles. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got everybody angry at everybody who they've been angry at forever, and everybody wants every title, and uh, this has me excited, scared, and also cynical. Uh, if you didn't watch, what happened was Adam Cole's promo was inter uh, interrupted by Keith Lee, Johnny Gargano, and Finn Balor. And everybody wants all the titles. Nobody just cares about one. Um, and so... Uh, or is excited for anyone else's success. Yes. Exactly. That's also a no-go. Right. So, um, Johnny Gar uh, Keith Lee will defend his title against Johnny Gargano and Finn Balor in a triple threat match. The winner of that match, the new and or still uh, North American champion, will then face Adam Cole in a winner take all. And this to me is awesome. I love when a guy holds two titles in a company. This is fun. It's unique. It gets me excited. Now, here's the cynicism. This is seems to be scheduled the same night as one of the fighter fests. This is like, hey, guys, we're going to unify our title over here on uh, on uh, USA Network. So I don't know what's going on over there, but we're going to unify titles. But I go, are they? Because remember how excited we were when Rollins versus Kofi happened right after Mania? And we were all invested in this really awesome match because we thought like, oh, my God, like this just happened. And they now they're fighting and one of them is going to win. And it ended up just being this big dust off where it's a DQ. So no titles change hands. And I'm like, God, I was so invested in that match. They totally got me. WWE got me for that match, that Kofi versus Seth thing that happened ages ago. And I was like, this is great. I love this. I can't wait to see who wins this. I'm petrified for Kofi. I'm petrified for Seth. Like, I don't want anybody to win, but I don't want anybody to lose. Like, this is great. Um, and now I feel like, well, this is just going to be that again. I uh, unless you're actually unifying titles, I, 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 I'm in the mindset generally of, oh, all right, you're not happy with the one, or the one doesn't mean enough because I want the other one. So I mean, there's clearly a theme going on at WWE right now where it's like winner takes all. Yeah, let's do that on Raw too, and let's do that. Yeah, here because we had that with our truth and oh yeah, the McIntyre and company. Right. That when they would sometimes when a, a good idea happens, it gets a little happy and then they start throwing it everywhere and you go right. well this isn't taken away but i'd rather the north american championship be a big deal and not the option c of yeah of tna to then jump to the other title because you go i don't really want this one anymore i want that one right i mean 
the the only my only argument for that is that at least at least when like somebody like Finn comes out, he doesn't immediately step up because he says like I moved to the front of the line. He didn't immediately step up to Adam Cole and be like I want your title. I do I respect the fact that at a, a, somebody who at any point can be an NXT champion contender. I do love that they are still looking at that North American title going, I want that belt. Like, so it, they're not, I don't think that they're ruining the North American title by doing this as much as uh, um, they're uh, highlighting that it is indeed a stepping stone, which I think is fair for a mid card title. But ultimately, like, like you said, it's not a unification. Um, somebody will then just lose one of them. This is just Becky two belts. Like she's not the women's champion. She was the raw and also the SmackDown and she just lost one of them eventually. I mean, it's still exciting, yeah, just, but I just don't think it's going to happen. That's my worry. My worry is that's not going to happen anyway. Sure. It, it, it feels like Finn Balor should have turned around to Regal on the Tron and gone. Well, well, no, wait, I'd just rather fight Adam Cole. Right. Like let them do that. Sure. And I'll, I'll fight him instead. Sure. Because um, I know how logic works. Right, sure. Oh, there's no logic in wrestling. Not in fucking, not in WWE programming this week, but... Get that out of there. No way. Um, the only other thing I think really worth noting on... Uh, on Or two things really quick on NXT that I want to touch upon. One is... Uh, fuck, I'm a bad podcast host. Was it Stabby? I can't remember. One of our listeners reached out on Twitter and was like, Yo, uh, Scott Narver, this isn't the first time that El Hio... The Phantasma oh, unmasked. Oh, that's right. Um, so I do want to give credit. Was that... I want to say it was Stabby, but I could be wrong. Hang I'll, on. I'll, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up because I know okay. it was it So was yeah, so last week, well. I want to give credit where credit's due. Last week, you did uh, shit on WWE for being like, oh, great. We brought in a luchador. Take your mask off. Fuck your... Shit on Triple H, mostly. Yeah. Yes, you did. But I'm going to give credit. And I said maybe this was his idea. We don't know that this wasn't a thing that he wanted to do. Um, and, uh, we, I didn't know this and you didn't know it either, but a, a listener let us know via Twitter that this isn't the first time he's unmasked. This is Ray Mysterio all over again. Like he's done this before. And I do think that his promo this week, I still hate the logic behind who the hell were those other masked dudes. Cause he only has two dudes in his entourage. Um, I still hate that, but I enjoyed his promo. I enjoyed the promo of like, yeah, you live behind a mask. That's what they see. You see a luchador. Like I want to be this man. And I, and I enjoyed his promo. I actually enjoyed that. At Ghost Abbey on Twitter had yeah, it was said Abby. yes I was for the right. record, and then it was in a uh, Triple Mania twenty six. There it is. Um, stop numbering them; makes it sound old. Uh, but come on, during the time of uh, coronavirus, there's clearly a guy who doesn't like wearing a mask. What's wrong with you? Keep your fucking mask <laughs> well, on. You know what? If they ever come to California in the next couple of weeks, it's mandatory now here in California. Thank you very oh, much, Governor Newsom. Phantasma again. Yeah, Get back to it. Um. So so yeah. So we got know, a little I, bit more I, of that it's story. Got a little bit more of that story. We got a little bit more with uh, with Drake Maverick, and it's fun that Jake Maverick's going to continue a feud with this guy. I think it's fun. Um, he got beat up, but uh, the only thing I want to bring up is something that I enjoy. It's a it ultimately not a great match, I don't think, but I do love that the first time the women's tag champions were crowned, and it was Sasha and Bailey when they were baby faces. They were like, "We're going to defend these titles on every brand." And they went down to NXT and they were like, we're here. We're going to defend him here. And then never did. <laughs> this actually feels a little bit like it's weird because they're, they're heels now, Sasha and Bailey, heel tag women's champions. But this almost feels like they're doing because I think ultimately we do know that they love the business and they respect the titles and they want the titles to be. We, we know how they feel about wrestling. They're wrestling fans, right? And they want all of this yeah. stuff to be taken. And they're still wrestlers. Yeah. This feels to me like they were like, all right, we're not going to fuck this up this time. We are actually going to go whether or not this was the right people to face. I don't know. But I guess who are the other two baby face women right now that aren't involved in the main title and whatnot. So I, it was weird that they fought Shotzi and Tegan. But I like the fact that they defended the titles on NXT. I want to give a little bit of credit there. Sure. I wish it was better, <laughs> but it happened. Oh, WWE, WWE 2020. I wish it was better, but it happened. But that's who was comfortable showing up to work. Yeah. Uh, well, fav favorite for me this week on NXT was definitely Imperium versus Brizango. Yeah. Hands that was down. Great. Hands down. Uh, that was best of the week as well. And I did enjoy the uh, the like promos surrounding the titles, the men's singles titles. I did enjoy that, and I enjoyed the announcement. It got me excited, and then I immediately remembered how history was. But yeah, 
And uh, Friday Night SmackDown, it's funny, we we both power out about it before the show. They were like, yeah, I didn't watch that because the pay-per-view was happening. So whatever was important was going to happen in the pay-per-view. Yeah, exactly. Oh, apparently the IC title was determined in the finals on SmackDown rather than on Backlash. Did not know that. We know, I know the outcome, but we know AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan is something worth a watch. So that clearly happened. I don't know what else happened. Oh, other than Jeff Hardy throwing his piss on Sheamus. Yeah, which, so, man, you know. But the but Backlash covered that, so. This, uh, you know, the whole throwing the piss thing is actually something that uh, on paper I would love. I would be like, oh, yeah. Piss this on is, paper? Piss on paper. <laughs> I think ultimately a P test. Yeah, on paper. Um, the fact that they had him pee, the fact they had this all happen in the in the ring was ridiculous and awful. And again, I didn't see the segment. I only saw the the same package that you did on Backlash, probably. Um, I'm if, upset that it was not rainbow colored, <laughs> or that they didn't like dye it green. Like it's just yeah, so they, just, just so they go like, why does he piss green? Do you piss green? Am I pissing wrong? Look, man, I dyed my hair a whole bunch. These sort of things happen. You know what? If they did piss it green. Then all these questions would have came up about what Oscar's missed was those couple months ago. So maybe it's better that it wasn't. But uh, this whole thing was just fucking weird. And 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 again, I don't I don't hate the idea of someone getting actual pisser in their face and wrestling because it makes it feel like oh shit that's disgusting. But for the sake like that's like some agitator shit that we would look back on finally. That's some shit that Stone Cold would have done back in the day. But you did it in yeah. the middle of the ring where they just made you piss. In the, and by the way, yo, I don't know about you. I don't think I could fill. I, I piss a lot, but not like that. <laughs> that motherfucker pissed a solid gallon. That was a half gallon, if anything. That's a main roster piss, bro. <laughs> oh, the main roster. That's a veteran piss. of the business piss. I gotta say, with that, um, Seamus did an outstanding reaction to it. So good. Not the not the typical like uh, like you roll your eyes at the uh, the. I guess I'm trying to say like the uh, typical wrestler reaction, yeah. right? Like the, the JBL. Like, oh. Something, yeah, where you just yeah. go, oh, come on, that's kind of lame, or it's too kitty. But right. he was genuinely horrified. Yeah. Um, and I I did want a security guard or two to, because it clearly it got, got on them. It got everybody. To do, to, to do like a, nope, I'm out. Like that should have been. I, you're not paying me enough. It should have looked like a grenade was thrown. Like everybody should have immediately just jumped away. Um, I mean, that was atrocious. Yeah. It, I I don't care what role you're playing. That's piss. Play it up for real. Yeah. That that's piss and no one's happy to get piss on them. Yeah. So um, I kind of I kind of knock all the extras, but I right. thought I thought they did as well as they could. And it seemed pretty good, but I didn't see the whole segment. Yeah. But yeah, let's get into let's get into backlash talk. <sighs> All right. Um, <laughs> so I, I will say that this is probably the first WWE pay-per-view that I on purpose skipped night of like out of a lack of desire in probably 11 years. Like, wow. And I don't think that I have missed a pay-per-view on purpose, meaning like I didn't have to go do a work thing or something kept me from it. That I literally yeah. Sunday morning, Alexandra went like, are we watching Backlash tonight? And I was like, I don't know, probably not. And then I didn't. I didn't watch it until I fast forwarded through most of it yesterday. Um, and uh, and it, it, uh, man, it sucks because I don't want to be that guy. But I was just like, I don't want to. I had no interest in watching it night of. I had no interest in watching it, to be honest with you. I only watched it for the sake of of this program. And I didn't watch all of it. I mean, that's been my story for quite a while. Yeah. Um, uh, and I even put it out on social media where I'm like, I don't know anymore, people. I don't right. know. I don't know what's entertaining on the show is to hear us shit on the stuff that's no good. I right. know the show's built on positivity and there's some of it was just fine. I well, love the chemistry between Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. So I think it's great. I think they do cool shit. Yeah. I was going to say that match was probably like there was some, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, you've got the arguably some of the greatest professional wrestlers in the world employed in arguably the greatest professional wrestling company in the world who has been doing it for longer than any other company. Like these guys, they're putting on perfectly fine wrestling matches. There were some great wrestling matches this night, but ultimately throw a rock these days and hit a great wrestling match. And I think that's the problem. Like I don't take anything away from Hardy and Sheamus. That was a hard hitting match. There was some brutal moments, well-told story, 
But like the fact that Hardy lost was fucking weird. Cause it's like, oh, okay. So Seamus gets his revenge for the piss, but Hardy doesn't get his revenge for the exploiting your alcoholism and setting you up for attempted manslaughter. Like or unintentional manslaughter, whatever the charge is there, but like now you're taking the piss. Yeah. So you've just got you have a you have, there's so many problems with the storytelling that the 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 good wrestling matches ultimately I just don't care anymore and it's a problem. Well, and that that's always a tricky one because I'll give that one a few weeks to a month to be like, well, all right, was there follow up where Jeff yep. can still do something because there's always maybe something in mind. And that's what I that's what I hope from the beginning of like I hope this is a build of some sort that's not just oh you tried to you told me I was an alcoholic and you said mean things about me now I beat you up and it's over like I do want a story so maybe that's okay but right. it, you know it did I'm trying to remember like the victory itself was fairly definitive yeah two bro kicks yeah it one on the outside one on the inside it wasn't you know it wasn't Orton and Edge which like you know you touted not you touted fighting in the confines of a wrestling match and then you broke the rules like i would have been one thing if if you know uh, he did something to him if uh, Sheamus won dirty somehow but i don't know again not a bad match the hardy and Sheamus, but ultimately it's it's it felt like you know we say this a lot felt like raw felt like smackdown yes yeah it's it's an extension of those things and it's not bigger and and better in any way it's it's not nope. it's not ten dollars worth it's really no, no it's it's not um or, or there's segments that make you go i want to not give you my money anymore yeah um so let's uh, you choose which one are we doing are we doing orton and edge or are we doing street profits let's do, and viking raiders i mean like uh i think we can talk about both uh, i think they're both worth talking about let's let's skim really quickly just a few things that i just i have to say uh f- Triple threat tag team matches need to be tornado or else they're stupid. Um, that women's match was absolutely stupid. I hate the rules. Why do you have a non DQ match where people are doing things to not get disqualified? Doesn't make any sense. Um, I didn't see McIntyre and Lashley. Didn't see Miz and Morrison and Braun Strowman. Did see uh, Orton and Edge and uh, and the Street Profits and Viking Raiders. So you okay. pick. You pick. All right, so let's let's do Viking Raiders and Street Profits. I was surprised, and I, I'm always for this. I'm pro. If you like some, like the fuck out of it. That's great. And there were some people when I had written about this online that they said it was funny. Uh, they questioned, and not in a disparaging way, they're like, I don't see if you didn't like it, how did you like Springs, uh, the Stadium Stampede, but you didn't like this? Um. To me, there's a big difference, and whether that's me being a snob because I write comedy and I write wrestling comedy and I perform it and I do all that, and I have a, the history of doing all this, and I have expectations, and I want certain things from it, uh, but there's a lot of dumb shit, and it's hard to tackle all of it in our two-hour show. So right. let's let's see. Um, Stadium Stampede, for one, all happens in real time. Yeah, They cut to it and saying like, here, we're going to the match. This is happening now. And there's never any jumps in time. Nope. There's never any jumps to dreams or uh, or memories or anything else that a camera cannot film. Now, granted, we do have things where that's weird, supernatural, yeah. magical power stuff. Which I love. That's fine. I have no problem with that. And I'm usually kind of okay with the two. Sometimes it's it's the way that they pull it off that I go like, yeah. And some of the Matt Hardy stuff during the stadium stampede was not for me that I'm like, yeah, that wasn't that good. It's, I mean, it's it's execution. And then the one word that we talk about in the show constantly, fucking logic. I don't care if something is a cartoon. I like cartoons. I like, you know, I like the idea of uh, fucking Ivar using the force to snag his his fucking turkey leg. But why though? Like ultimately the problem with this thing was not just bad comedy because these guys are all very likable and they're fine. It's yeah, they're, they are funny people and I enjoy watching them, but nothing they did had any sort. There was no logic in any human behavior behind the cartoon. 
You can have cartoon things that occur. You can have, you know, Jeff Hardy being dipped in the, I'm sorry, Matt Hardy being dipped in the lake and then coming up a different character because the entire time, the logic here is that the fucking pride and whatever the hell Santana Ortiz are trying to murder him. And the joke is that they can't murder him because he's keep getting resurrected. And that's the logic. And then when they think they murder him, they leave and go, good, he's murdered. And he comes back and it's a consistent tale. It's a stupid tale, but it's a consistent yeah. tale. What is happening here? Are they friends or do they want to murder each other and put themselves through glass panels and use axes? Are they, is this a friendly rivalry or is this a we must end you at all cost? What is the story? Yeah, I, I have trouble with the commitment and the follow through. Yes. Because because of the, there isn't any with uh, what, what you're talking about. And on top of that, um, so Ivar is a god because he has the fucking force now. Sure. That we see. And that's never going to happen again no. when he gets into a ring. No. We're never going to have the follow through of that. It's never going to be anything where he can either a, he can summon Turkey legs and or other objects potentially, or he has the fucking force. That's never going to pay off again ever. Even though he's now one of the most powerful characters in all of WWE, because he can do this, but it'll mean nothing because people will go like, Oh, that's great. We want to see that more. You can't, you can't follow through. Imagine all the tele, imagine all the telekinetic low blows. He's going to get away with. (laughs) Yeah, like there's <laughs> there's that dumb shit. I cannot stand. I cannot at all stand filming something that's happening in real time and then we see someone's dreams yeah, or their memories. It's so that unnecessary. drives me fucking nuts. And it's also so the the reality of it is and I know I'm putting too much logic into this and some people just enjoy it for the sake of it. Good for you. Um he's we're watching the memories of i guess ivar watching himself on television in hd because it's not any other memories it's what's what's played out on television to recap shit that we've seen to then beat the joke in further so the whole thing of uh hey you're cute yeah you not so much we see every single one that they did again in recap in his memory to then do the joke again so it is dead yeah. and doesn't play. This is not written by people who understand comedy, nor filmmaking, nor storytelling. Um, the problem is, is that this wrestling company is starting to make uh, comedic short films, and uh, uh, they are worse than the shit you might find at a, at a fucking film school, which I'd bash all the time anyway. Like there, it's I, I yeah, it's I've been in stuff that I'm like so I don't bad. know what was what was worse, the shit I was in or this. Yeah, it's really it's kind of insulting that this is. And I've said this is the shit that I've complained about Impact Wrestling for years, where it's like this is so it's just so stupid, but not fun stupid. Not like, yeah. oh, that was stupid. Oh, zany. Like, it's not zany stupid. Hey, we had this conversation in the pre-show about stupid, what I called stupid movies. Um, right. And then I was like, wait, that's not what I mean. I don't mean stupid movies. I mean zany movies because zany movies are great. Um, this is stupid, not zany. Um, and it's not, it's illogical. It's not even for kids. I think that even if a kid watched this, they would go, I don't get it. I, I don't, what... Am I supposed to like these guys? Am I supposed to hate these guys? They're friends. They're fighting ninjas. I got no problem with a group of ninjas rolling up on motorcycles and fighting. That's hilarious. Give me that. That's fine. But explain it to me in the sense of how do these primary four characters um, think about this situation? And there's never. and And on top of that, like I agree about the ninjas. If Akira Tozawa leads a motorcycle ninja gang great that's incredible i love it do anything to further that and to go with that commitment of like we're gonna do this so yes we're gonna dress up a bunch of nxt dudes in ninja costumes and we're gonna fucking ride this and ride this hard so first off acknowledge akira tozawa in any way in name because the commentators aren't there and no one says his name and probably a lot of the audience doesn't know who the fuck he is so that might be important a yeah have a name for the gang. Have have there be something on the back of the of the ninja outfits. Have it be, like say you you have a motorcycle gang like on the side. You know anything to 
to further along all this stuff, but it's since there's nothing, it to me it falls flat and it's not interesting and it seems hokey and dumb. But yeah. be super hokey and super silly. Go anywhere. This is it's just fucking lame. This seems to me like something a grandparent does for a grandchild that they think they're gonna love. It's out of touch. It's uh, insulting, not just to um, the the children that you may be thinking you're making it for, but to anybody who may see it. And it's ultimately like it's not professional. Like this isn't professional. This isn't a professional television show. It's an amateur television show. That's what it feels like. It feels like shit you would find on public access. That they charge me ten dollars for. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks to um, viewers like me. Yeah. Again, that's not to say that it didn't have a moment or two in it that I went, oh, I like that. That was a fun little moment. But it's not it's not enough to win over the segment. Like you can't. You, uh, it's like you said, you can't have the cutaways and the dream sequence um, on top of the uh, the general um, illogical reasoning that they're. What are they fighting about? Because by the way, uh, amongst the, the story, cuts in time too, the we, story we that they told. Yeah, when they told the story, anything you could do, I can do better. This had nothing to do with that. They weren't. Correct. They weren't one up. If this was a series of them consistently one up each other and doing things around the performance center, and that's here we go. Boom, we fixed it. That's what this should have been. They had a match scheduled to the night. They should have never made the match because they were too busy consistently trying to one up each other at things around the performance center, whether it was, oh, okay, I bet you can't uh, tip over this thing, or I bet you can't throw this and get it in here. I bet you can't jump high and touch that thing. It should have been a series of them, you know, trying to consistently out, out, you know, out match each other or one up each other. Um, and even if it was, even if it got physical to where they're fighting, where it's literally like Ivar does like a crazy big body slam on, uh, you know, uh, Montez and then Montez goes, okay, okay, fine. And then like willingly, you know, and then like, uh, you know, uh, Ivar like willingly lets him do it to him where it gets physical, but they're doing it like, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead and hit me. Like it's a chops, like it's a slap, you know, or a chop off kind of thing. Like, I don't know. Give me some fucking logic. Like it, it's so illogical. I have no idea what these characters are thinking or doing at any given point in time. And I'm bothered that we've spent this much time talking about it. I apologize. I, and I'll, I mean, I could go on and on about this. There's still so many more points I want to make, but WWE has no faith in the audience because they have to show those recaps yeah. to do, to do jokes again on top of it. That's what, that's how little they think of you because someone jokes. went, we have to throw in more footage because they won't get it. And jokes that didn't and, necessarily warrant being told the first time. Like it's yeah. not, it's not even like, guys, this is such a good bit that we really got to make sure it lands. It's like, Hey, this is a mediocre bit that we're going to beaten to the ground and it didn't get that trust far me the i know i do them on the show constantly <laughs> um money for sunny everybody oh. money for sunny well and listen. then uh and then on top of that i love the fact that they had to put a bunch of equipment over ronda rousey's face on the truck to hide her and all the shots yeah they so did that way when they climb up on the truck and then jump off to do the fucking dumpster monster because they don't know how to end the segment. Remember Star Wars? They got them. They, they, they dug themselves in such a fucking hole of no logic and no comedy that they went, um, let's just do Star Wars Dumpster Monster. Great. Da -da 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 -da. You know. And like I said earlier, if you look closely, it's clearly just the tail of a fake alligator. It's one one tail. <laughs> That's just that the some that some poor PA is just shaking off camera. I hope to God it was Bruce Pritchard having to do it. Oh, You're, get your hands dirty. Yep. All right. So I'm sorry. Bruce Pritchard is back in charge of creative, everybody, in case you didn't notice. I'm sorry. Yeah. Again, I didn't even want to spend any time on it, but it's just hard not to rant about a thing. Listen, the only reason we're angry is because we love wrestling and because we're passionate because we want it to be good. And on top of that, <laughs> I do wrestling comedy that I believe is way funnier <laughs> and I put... More thought and effort into it, and I want people to watch it. And I know it's, I, it feels like it's never going to get that audience when I see people watching this and going like, hey, they shake their fist at it. It's like, yeah, there's alternatives. So it's I get it. Um, so, uh, gr greatest wrestling match ever. Um, I, I, I got a little emotional with the, the Fink thing. I actually really yeah, liked I did that. Too. I actually really I was liked like, that. Why, why did why did you do this? Oh. <laughs> no, I liked it. I thought it was really sweet. Um, but uh, yeah, so 
I, I, I don't know. All right, this is my thought on the greatest wrestling match ever. Was that I think somebody actually had a decent idea. Okay. And then somebody else ruined it. That's what I think. I don't know who was either people. Um, but I think somebody said, listen, we have this bizarre environment. We can control a lot more than we could. We can script a lot more. Why don't we make a wrestling match that in and itself is sort of an, a love letter to pro wrestling? And then another person went, oh, that's great. Um, I don't know why I did that voice all of a sudden. Uh, that's great. We'll, we'll call it the greatest wrestling match ever, which inherently just ruins it from the second they announce it because that's a ridiculous thing to name something. And then they overproduce and over script it and overshoot it to the point where I think what was ultimately probably not a bad idea. This did seem to me that way. It did seem to me like it felt like a, a love letter to pro wrestling. I, I actually enjoyed the, the nods to iconic moments and iconic other wrestlers, but it was done to the point where you ruined it. You pushed the fucking cart over the edge of the cliff instead of just moving it along. Um, but, and ultimately, uh, you know, it, I like these guys. It was, you know, I like watching them wrestle. It was, I, it's Edge's first singles match in eight years, nine years. Look, that's great. But ultimately, it was just like you, they ruined what I thought was maybe a potential good idea. Uh, I love Star Wars, everybody. Uh, and I especially like the original cuts of Star Wars. I'm not such a big fan of the Star Wars special editions. And that's what this was. I'd love to go back and watch the original Edge versus Orton on VHS. Wow. Because well it's put. probably pretty fucking great. Well put. But uh, Edge versus Orton special edition is is cringy at times, and but the the base match the base match is outstanding. It's a great yeah. match. It was a great it's match. A great match. All the extra chants that don't match along with the lifeless crowd that has to stand there for hours. Oh yeah, no sitting. They put, no leaning up against barricades. I feel so bad for these lifeless scripted bastards. Put in these newly printed T shirts that that just have to stand there. It sucks. That's. That's a whole other thing, but they, it doesn't, the, the noises don't match. There's way more noise than there is people. It's like smack. It's like old tape smackdowns yeah. from the, from the mid two thousands where they just pumped in a bunch of noise. And, uh, I know it wasn't distracting everybody. That stuff distracts me. It, it, it bothers me. I actually liked it in premise. Again, I think ultimately this was a good idea that somebody ruined because it, it wouldn't have bothered me if it was just like blended a little bit or if it was done in a way that shows us what you're doing. Like if you show us your cards and say like, hey, guys, this is what to expect. This is what we're doing. I like that the ref was in the old timey fucking, you know, Saturday night main event bow tie. And like there were mm -hmm. things that you were doing. If you honestly, if they were cutting even to stock footage of crowds, I feel again, it was like, I don't know. They did. They had an idea and then they fucking ruined whatever the idea was by exploring this, this all This really should have been This really should have been not the NXT developmental people in the crowd. This yeah. should have been a change of Christian comes out, Beth Phoenix comes out. Yeah. Rick Flair comes out and they they're the ones that are like this match is important and yeah. we're going to go nuts during it. That would have been great. That would have been great. Um but it's ultimately it is a good match. I th think that was the favorite thing on the show, yeah. regardless of hands all down. the fuckery that happens with it. But Hand, hands down, I don't know the, these these pay per views. Uh, I agree with you. I watch this stuff because we kind of have an obligation to on the show. We talk about it. We do it. I hope it's fun that you hear us talk about it. I hope it's funny at times. I hope it's not just complaining. But fuck, <laughs> I would stop watching WWE right now if it wasn't the case. But hey. Everybody likes some, and that's not to discourage you from liking it. Like whatever you like, enjoy whatever you enjoy. Monday Night Raw. <laughs> you know, Monday Night Raw had some decent things. I actually, man, MVP is doing the Lord's work over on Monday Night Raw. Yeah, he's great. Um, I really enjoy everything that he's doing. I enjoy his approach of a uh, of Apollo Cruz. Um. I enjoy him uh, kind of, you know, trying to get his, uh, I don't know, his stable 
you know, uh, intact and, and uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. He's just doing great work. Um, other people, on the other hand. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, you know, I said this last week. I think he's the consistent, consistently most interesting act going on. And yes. I'd love to see the title on Lashley because there's so many places so far to go with that act. And I feel it's a shame that they've dropped so much with McIntyre. Yeah. But then let's put the title on the thing that's that's awesome and going forward um, I, I, and mvp is is great also i just love you, that he can wrestle i love that like because alexandra was uh she was surprised when she saw mvp because she she's seen him and she's like she really likes his his look she thinks he's great backstage and then uh when he got in the ring she was like wow he's he's actually like really fit and he's like she's like i didn't think he would be so muscular i've just seen him in suits for so many weeks and mm-hmm. i'm like and she was like what what's the deal with this guy and i was like yeah i was like he's he, she was like, what is he doing? Like, what is his story? I was like, well, what he's doing is, is he's becoming Paul Heyman who also wrestles. And, uh, and I dig that. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, and uh, lastly, wants a divorce. Finally. How dare you want love to end? How dare you? <laughs> um... Can't they talk it out? Can't they go see a therapist? Where's Where's Doctor? Uh, what was his name? Who helped Shelby. out? Shelby. Um, Shelby. Yeah, where's Doctor Shelby? Don't they just need to hug it out? Maybe. I don't think Doctor Shelby does does uh, marriage counseling though. Doctor Shelby for Hall of Fame 2021. What happened in 2020 though? <laughs> <laughs> well, they well, we're still waiting on all them to get in there. Dave uh, Batista. All Man, right. I got to say, I you know, we talk about all the time, wrestlers coming out of retirement, and this qualifies, but damn it, I'd love one more match for Christian. And this oh. was, uh, I think this was well told and well done, and I like the 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 addition of Ric Flair right. with Christian confronting Randy Orton uh, at the top of the show, and then Orton challenges him to a match. And hey, look, we joke about it all the time. We just did for fucking 15 minutes. There was logic here. This was filled with logic. This Absolutely. was filled with so much logic that Orton's saying, look, I know you can't get back at the ring. I know you can't do all this. So it'll be unsanctioned. Yeah. We don't, you, don't so need to get, you don't need to get the uh, approval of the doctors because uh, it's only up to you to do. They can't be held accountable. Exactly. And then Christian talking with people backstage and them going like, I don't know, man, this doesn't seem like a good idea. You shouldn't do it. And you know, it's about the honor of your family and friends and this and that. And so there's there's great emotional weight behind it. And then yeah. he has to make the decision and he goes like, I'm going to do it. Gets out there, doesn't have his gear, which is also great. I love logic that. of like he didn't have his fucking tights. and Because he know. doesn't because why would he bring it? He's retired. He's never wearing that ever again. Right. Absolutely. Um, and then Flair comes out, tries to stop it one more time. And I'm like, I don't know. That's Ric Flair. He's a wham right in the balls. The dirtiest and player in the I, game. I've always noticed this. There's nobody that takes more ball shots in the history of wrestling other than Christian. Really? And again, he takes another one. The guy, watch any of his matches. Like, if there's uh, ever a shot to the balls, Christian's taking it. <laughs> all right. It's a good drinking that's how game. He, that's how he won the world championship. Oh, right. I forgot about was that. was a kick to the balls. Like, oh, there's God. so many kicks to the balls. I hope to interview him someday and ask him about that. But yes, uh, it was great. Oh, you got to get him a in the backyard. Way Backyard Wrestling Entertainment for a Balls Count Anywhere match. <laughs> uh, a, a great way to tell a story, to have someone come out of retirement, but yeah. in a way that means something. Um, just a great story. And Orton takes him out, but does the punt to the head. Yeah. Which he's teased a number of times over the years, but they've never done it. And that was severe. He didn't hit him with an RKO. He did the punt to the head and then talked a bunch of shit. I liked Orton's... Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, right. it's your fault. Yeah. It's your fault. You interrupted me. You brought this on yourself. Yep. Did have to be a great way. Um, so yeah, ultimately I think that's the that's moment of the night for me. I'm raw was Christian Norton. Um second, second might just be our truth being enjoyable. Here's a guy who's making comedy with logic because he doesn't know what's going on, and that's the logic. I loved mm-hmm. I loved him uh being uh, upset and afraid that he got busted by MVP and Lashley. But then the second he looks up and he sees that McIntyre was there, he goes, Oh yeah, right. I'm good. Yeah. What now? And I love that. He immediately got tough when Mac, he's just so fun. Um, he's our uh, truth is a, a goddamn gem. He's a miracle. Put him on TV. Listen, if Raw's three hours, make two of it. Our truth. I'm fine with that. 
And I'm I'm glad that it wasn't just uh like, oh, you're gonna be with other people that don't give a shit about your title. It was right. all right, we're gonna throw you in with Lashley and we're gonna throw you in with McIntyre and he's gonna throw out the winner takes all premise yeah. and both titles are on the line and then McIntyre's pissed and he's like, I'll fix it. Right. Hey, I fixed it. My title's not on the line anymore, just yours. Yep. That's great. Logic. And Ma- and, and McIntyre being like a you know what? I can fight and I'm gonna do this and our truth going like, give me credit. Yeah. I can, I can, I can fight for us. Yeah, there's some more logic here. It was, it was nice. Um, and and that feel good moment where he gives him the victory, where McIntyre is like, "Come on, truth, like this is your yours to win." You know, again, a little weird, but I think it's it's acceptable because McIntyre's title was. <laughs> I was like, "What are you doing? Right. What 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 honest competitor just gives a win away when you have it? Who cares?" But then I'm like, oh, "Okay, no, this is fine. I like this." And Big Show's back, but he didn't turn yet, which shocked the shit out of me. Give it, give it a minute. <sighs> yeah. Um. So yeah, that was raw. That was raw. Uh. Ultimately, uh, I think highlights of the week are you know AEW and NXT, which seems to have been kind of the running thing for a week, for the couple of weeks now, months probably. Mm-hmm. Um. Do you? Uh. I, I'm so nervous about about NXT about McMahon getting more involved in that and just destroying that that show because it's already been you know slight downhill um and i don't want that to become a cliff but i don't know what do you think the listeners have to say um i don't have to guess because we could just find out by listening to the compadres hotline uh we've got a lot of calls this week we'll try to get to as many as we can thank you to everybody who called uh, once again, that number seven four seven six 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 five six zero six seven four seven six 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 five six zero six. That it's just a voicemail. You can call anytime, uh, say whatever you want, and uh, you know, tell us your thoughts, ask us your questions. Open twenty four hours a day. Uh, let's see what the people have to say this week. What's up, Padres? It's Tim Redbeard from Connecticut. Uh, wondering if you guys had watched the most recent chapter of Last Ride and caught. Undertaker making a crack at Mojo Raleigh over this ridiculous face paint. That was really funny. Uh, so Backlash was, you know, another fine. It was on, so I watched it. Um, greatest wrestling match ever. Yeah, it was really good. But I just totally burned out after all the false inches. Oh, my God. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys, what, in your opinion, what makes a match great? And do you guys have a greatest match ever? And finally, some really awesome news. I got engaged last week, so there will be a a Mrs. Redbeard next August. Save the date. I'm sure you won't come because we don't know each other. Uh, Anyway, I hope you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you next time. Tim Redbeard, thank you so much for the call. First off, congratulations on watching The Undertaker Last Ride Chapter 4. It was great. Chapter 5 is this Sunday. I can't wait. I'm sitting there with bated breath. And yes, that was a good rip on Mojo. Oh, and yeah, congratulations on uh, getting engaged and all that. Yeah, good job. How exciting. Where'd you do it? Where'd you, where'd you, where'd you propose? Did you get proposed to? Huh? That happens now. That's exciting. I'll save the date. I'll save it. Just save the date on here. We'll save it. I don't know what we're saving it for, but we're saving it. I'll save it. I, I got nothing on I, that day. I, I don't mean, know. I don't know if I'm going to go anywhere. I don't go anywhere anymore. I don't know where Tim Redbeard thing. lives. Is he in Connecticut? Tim Redbeard from Connecticut? Mm-hmm. It sounds like a thing. Yeah, I think he's in Connecticut. Listen, uh, we'll, we'll come. I'm saying it right now. We're all going to we're all, we're, we're all be there. Um, in At fact, least Pod Dog will be there. In fact, it's mandatory we would like to be your wedding party. <laughs> um... Anyways, yeah, greatest wrestling match ever. He says not. It was a good match, but not a great one. And he wants to know what we think make a great match and if we have a greatest match ever. Yeah, I, I think uh, mine always change. Like there, there's always top right. contenders and, and, and what can change. I, I definitely have like a top 10 or so that uh, is, is always flowing. But right now, and I we, we watched this on a, on a Patreon uh, episode uh, on a watch along. My greatest wrestling match ever is Corporate Dude Love versus Stone Cold Steve Austin with Vince McMahon as a special guest referee right. and Timekeeper Pat. Uh, no, sorry, that special guest ring announcer Pat Patterson and Timekeeper Gerald Briscoe. 
I love that match. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And what makes it great? What makes it great is uh, you can't get ahead of it. There's right. always something else going on. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be all the players involved, but um, it's the excitement. It's the performance. It's the story being told. Um, and uh, in large part, the crowd, like everybody, it, when it becomes a living, breathing thing, when it becomes real and everyone can lose themselves in it and escape into it right. and really cheer and boo all the real moments. Right. I think that's, I think that's the recipe that makes a, a great wrestling match. Yeah. I, some people are moves. Some people are story. I think it's got to be a perfect, it's, it's got to be a perfect synergy of story inside, outside the ring, uh, physical acts that make the story better. Like the, the wrestling has to make the story better and the story has to be good not just between the bells, but before the bell ever rang. That to me, what makes a perfect wrestling match. And then I love, you know, shit like the CWC where just two guys just told a great story in between the bell. I've seen some of the best quote wrestling matches I've ever seen like that, but I, they will never be the greatest to me because most of them had no story going into them. So it's got to have everything. Well, it's got to have a little bit of everything in my opinion. I mean, I, I, I counted that too. One of my favorite wrestling matches of all time also is Samoa Joe versus Kobashi. Um, I did not know the story at all when seeing that match. I still don't know the story of that match. And there's no commentary during that match. Right. Uh, it is just it is just a grandpa tough guy fighting a younger tough guy. And who will go down first? And it's all between the bells. There's a little bit in the entrance right. that you get some vibes and you go, all right, I see what's going on here and I, I dig it. But it, it becomes so real. It becomes so visceral. Right. Not viscera. Oh. But visceral. I yes, yeah, so I think my is mine is always a go to answer, which a lot of people go like, oh, that's such a generic bullshit answer. But the truth is, is I've never really been able to find a reason uh, or find a match that's topped it uh, for me emotionally, and that is Taker HBK one at WrestleMania twenty five. I always say that there's something about my return to watching wrestling just kind of prior to that, and uh, uh, the story leading up to it hitting my nostalgia uh, was firing on all the right ways. I think the two guys were both at just like a great part in their careers. Um, and uh, there was just something about the, you know, the, the, that sort of like everything that you love about the underdog being Shawn Michaels and everything you love about this icon gatekeeper of being taker just collided in just this classic match that had, insane things that happened during it that was man i mean i know false finishes aren't new to wrestling and they've been around for years but i feel like that match is what made the false finish the norm in a big spectacle um you know like modern wrestlemania match like i don't remember a ton of matches before that where people were kicking no, out you don't we're kicking out of multiple <laughs> things yeah so austin and rock they would do it yeah yeah but you have a bad memory, and that's okay. We still love you. Hey, guys. Stabby from Jamaica here. And I wanted to take a break from all the AEW and NXT stuff and all that and kind of give you a flight of fancy I had the other day. What if wrestling was an actual sport? And no, I don't mean UFC. I no, I don't mean, like, amateur wrestling. I mean, like, what if kind of like how gymnastics and other performance um, arts, wrestling had... Two, two people going to a ring under a set time limit, perform a match which they choreographed beforehand, and then judges, a panel of judges, like give them a score based on what, like, certain criteria, like athleticism, um, storytelling, and so on. You know, you could have different kind of matches, you know, so you could have the, the high flying matches separate versus the ground based style, and so on. Just a thought I had. Like, can you imagine just people just judging? A match just for the content of the match and it actually being scored and compared to other matches instead of you know the uh the thickness of an actual story and it's like you know what just have a match and see who the who puts together the best match just a just a thought i had what do you think stabby thank you so much we mentioned you earlier on the show um uh thanks for letting us know about el hio de fantasmo um man what an interesting premise of what if the 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 performance of pro wrestling itself was judged as a sport. Um, I, I'm 
associating it with something like, you know, fucking ice skating or gymnastics, like he said, I guess, where there's like there is a routine and the routine is whatever the match is. I think the question that I have would be, is there still an audience reacting as if it's story? Because if it's just like a silent room with two people doing the match and judges, then it's that first week of quarantine in WWE. <laughs> and uh, I don't- well, with all those sports there, there is an audience. There are spectators. Sure. Right. So ice skating, all that, like they, they get the applause when they do the pirouettes and sure, all that sure, sort of that's stuff. Fair. Um, yeah, this it's, it's, uh, I, I apologize, Stabby. My mind is a little blown thinking about this, <laughs> this concept. Uh, it is, it is, it is a gigantic onion that I really want to peel back in a lot of ways. Um, it is interesting because for my brain immediately went to, well, great. Finally, a reason to bring back performance enhancing drugs to wrestling. <laughs> like steroids are back in a huge way because everyone's going to try and get the greatest body, the biggest, bulkiest thing. Cause that'll definitely be there. Right. You have to. I love that you're excited about that. I am. It's time to beef up again. Make wrestling beefed up again. And uh, I do not sign off on that. <laughs> oh, you and your lean pork don't care for that. Uh, it, it would be really fascinating because I don't know. There are classifications like would it would it be very RVD Jerry Lynn like those 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 uh first five to ten minute opening you know i'm gonna grab your leg a sweep under go up uh, and try and leg drop and no well, yeah he said they would turn be, and then face each other he said there would be like different categories where it's like you could have your ground and power right? you could have your high flyers yeah the the lesnar mcintyre matches where right. it's like it was four minutes but it was just a bunch of finishers and it was super exciting but right. do you establish your finishers do you have to be an established person are That's- you doing other people's moves that's so what I meant when I said, is there an audience? I didn't mean like, does it take place necessarily in the audience? But like, are people following the storylines or is it simply just, I think what he said was like the story from the bell to bell, like how good this match yeah. was as a story. Uh, I think it would have to be that in order for it to work this way. And well, the tricky part is, is to know, Ooh, that's, that's the finishing move that that person does. Right. Right. Then, if it's someone, do, are they cosplaying as wrestlers? They would still need, no, they would still need commentary. To like fill you in with the story. <laughs> Actually, no, I just described CWC. I just mentioned it. This, what he's describing is like the cruiserweight classic where it's a bunch of people that you don't know and you get to watch. And at the end of it, you get to judge uh, from, you know, one to 10. And the Russian judges are always going to, you know, they're always going to stiff you a little bit. Well, finally, Kurt Angle can be an Olympic gold medalist again, is what I got to say. Hey, compadres, it's Mickey Bell here in Gibraltar, and I wanted to ask you this week what you thought of the Seth rollins Rey Mysterio feud. You know, last week, seemingly, Dominic uh, got involved with that promo. Uh, are they building him up? You know, we've had this kind of happen before with Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar and him getting involved, but then nothing comes of it. Uh, is he actually going to become an active in-ring competitor now? I don't know where he is in his training, Um but it seems like they're building towards that. Are we getting Seth versus Dominic Mysterio at SummerSlam? Is that a thing? Uh, and where do Alistair Black and Umberto Carrillo, you know, fall in? Uh, every week they win matches against, you know, Seth's di- disciples, and then they get beaten down. The beatdowns are getting a bit repetitive, but I suppose they're building up the heel faction. So, yeah, I don't know where they're going with this. Um, I like everybody that's involved in it. And I'm glad that they're, you know, doing something different with Seth in this new heel capacity. And and, and I love Alistair Black. Anything he does is amazing. His work with, with Murphy is great. But yeah, are we going to see Dominic Mysterio become an actual active in-ring competitor out of this? What do you guys think? Uh, thanks once again, guys, uh, for taking my message. Hope you're all staying safe and healthy. And thanks for continuing to do the shows even though you're not together and you're doing it remotely, we all appreciate that. Thanks guys. Mickey Bell. Always great to hear from you. Um, yeah, I actually think that this is leading to some sort of in ring in ring. I can speak debut for Dominic, whether or not it's like the beginning of his career career. I don't think so. I think if anything, it'll likely end up being some sort of tag team where it's, you know, Ray and Dominic versus Seth and one of his boys, or even maybe 
you know, uh, I, don't, I don't think Vasquez is coming back, but another like member of the family or just like they get somebody who's, uh, you know, considered a close friend and then ends up being a stable versus a stable that includes Dominic. That's where I see it going. Yeah, I th- I thought it was really great on Monday when Dominic came out and attacked yeah. Seth. And then I thought wormed away, which was so fun because he didn't end up getting beat down. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was great. I if very much I, this is what I like to picture in my mind that Seth was backstage with Dominic and goes like, "All right, kid, bring it. Like, wail away. This right. is your moment. This is the time that you're going in there. So you got to make the most of it. So I can take it. Do it. And he did. He brought the fire. Yeah, he looked good. So I'd love to see a tag team of father and son versus uh, guessing Seth and. Probably buddy buddies is over yeah. over over theory. Um, I think that'd be a good way to go. Whether that leads down the line to him joining the greater good and doing all that, or, I, I I certainly don't want to see that anytime soon. I want to see the progression of father and son doing things together, or as long as possible, or like something happens, uh, like next week uh, they finally get their hands on Dominic and Dominic takes a beating and then. Ray is like, that's it. I've had enough. I want you, Seth, one-on-one and a real match, blah, blah, blah. I want to end this. And then Seth goes like, all right, I'll give you that match, but only if you and Dominic can beat my boys, Theory and Murphy. Then you've got like a series of matches. And that, yeah, I feel like that could, it could go that way as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not unhappy with that story on Raw either. Like we didn't mention it this week, but uh, it's, the I think the problem is is that these sorts of stories that are so heel centric are really lacking without the audience. Oh, and I'm getting Sushi Pants's butthole in the Zoom right now. Thanks, Sushi. Not Pants. yet. It's almost there. Uh, it's uh, she's working her way towards it. Oh, uh, he's she's just walked right across, and there it is. Boom. There it is. Sushi Boom. Pants's butthole on the Zoom. I'm gonna take a picture for the audience. Great. Um, so uh. Anyways, what was I saying before a cat butthole zoomed with me for five minutes? Oh, it's good. I, uh, it's good, but it's I like, think she's underage. I don't think it's cool that you took oh, a no. photo of the cat's butthole. It's missing. Uh, it's missing because I don't think the audience is there to really feel the pain that Seth is doing. I think heels are struggling uh, amidst the pandemic more than the baby faces are. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see what Drew McIntyre has to say about all that afterwards. Hey guys, it's Mr. Cordero from New York. Cordero112176 is my Instagram. You guys asked for a first time caller, so I'm a first time caller. There's a few things I want to get off my chest. First of all, I know this is not a movie podcast, but Pinch the Movie was great. Me and my sons were able to watch it twice this past weekend, and we should have watched it more times than Backlash. Backlash was horrible. I'm, the only thing I'm excited about was the two heroes lost. That's Edge and Hardy. Can't stand either one of them. And on Raw, my highlight was for that was hopefully the heel turn for Apollo Crews. Otherwise, Raw was garbage. And on AEW, anything with Chris Jericho always puts a smile on my face. My question to you guys is, who will the Fiend challenge next? Because that Wyatt Strowman one-off, I didn't care for it. So I hope the Fiend takes on Strowman again. Thanks. I hope you guys are staying safe. Be good. Cordero, thank you so much for calling. First time caller. Thank you for your kind words about Pinch. I agree. Don't watch Backlash. Watch Pinch twice. Um, actually, you probably watch it three times for how long Backlash was. Um, thank you so much for the first time call. Uh, love hearing that New York accent. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, who do you think? Sh- By the way, before we even answer his question, I love that he's like, yeah, hate all the baby faces. <laughs> it's like, screw <laughs> up. Uh, he's a man of my own heart. Um, who do you think Fiend should face next? Well, that's being answered as this episode goes out. Because I'm sure SmackDown is airing uh, tomorrow night, which is tonight. If you're listening to this on Friday, sorry, we're recording on Thursday. Yeah, um, yeah we switched back to Thursdays now. Yeah, we never talked about that. So. We never talked about that. But we we had moved to Friday to accommodate uh, a schedule for Dale um, temporarily, but then Dale had a problem with Friday. So we move back to Thursday, and now Dale is once again uh, uh, having schedule conflicts. 
But yeah, we're back to Thursdays coming out on Fridays, everybody. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh, it might be answered. Well, since they don't have to be on the show anymore, it doesn't matter. Everyone's on every show because uh, I was first trying to think like, oh, who's on that show? Daniel Bryan's been kind of played out for a bit. Not that I wouldn't love to see them fight more. Um, let me see. I think what would be really, really great is Jeff Hardy versus Bray Wyatt. Yeah. I know that wraps up Sheamus stuff and I, I like the, their matches together. I think there is potential more story there, but I definitely don't want to let that go. I don't know how much longer Jeff's got on his contract, WWE, but I'd love to see some Jeff Hardy versus Bray Wyatt or the fiend. Yeah, I'm, I can get behind that. I had this idea the other day. I was talking with Alexandra, uh, and, uh, I was saying like, man, if WWE had uh, just a set of balls on them, what they would have done months, months ago when the pandemic hit and they had to start thinking outside of the box, they should just turn all of Raw and SmackDown into Bray Wyatt's mind. We should just be watching Bray Wyatt's mind. That way they could do dumb, ridiculous, stupid shit with people like the Street Profits and Viking Raiders. All this weird shit. They can have bizarre one-off feuds that don't matter because it's all in his head. Because it's just his him controlling things. You can have weird endings to weird matches. You There, there, there is no rules. Um, and then what's great is that when an audience comes back, it's like, what was that? Oh, that was just inside of Bray Wyatt's mind and like the wrestling had been going on and we just hadn't been seeing it for the past few months. Um, and like once an audience comes back and it's like, Hey, welcome back. And then they can like show us a highlight from last week that didn't happen. And it's just like fucking all fucking shit that was in his, I don't know. I think if they had any balls, they take some weird ass risk and do something zany like that. And you can still have, it doesn't have to be all about Bray. It could be like all the other characters. You can have Drew McIntyre. Bray could be, having Drew McIntyre defend his title and just in weird ways and versus weird opponents and just have it all be whatever the fuck he wants. And I don't know. Oh my God. That that explains it. Chad Gable's shorty G and Bray Wyatt's mind. Yeah. And it's not real. That's the only reason why uh, Jason Jordan popped up again. It was because Bray, Bray imagined he was still around. And Lars Sullivan's still wrestling on SmackDown in Bray yep. Wyatt's mind. Yep, exactly. Um, anyways, who's his next opponent? I don't care. I put him on my TV. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think uh, I think uh, Jeff is a great one. And, uh, you know, it's weird because he doesn't need to face baby faces or heels specifically. It could be anybody. Um, True. I, th- I think that uh, Jeff is a great one. There's so many people that just aren't being used. I, I would love to see Nikki him. Cross. Oh, I'd love to see him and KO do something together. Good luck. Yeah. Um. Anyways, once again, Kudur, thank you so much um, for being a first time caller for, uh, you know, uh, listen, responding to the call to arms and uh, for dropping. And, uh, hopefully don't be a last time caller. Yeah. This is Big Al from Parts Known. My question is, WWE is making, is remaking the movie No Holds Barred. Who stars in it? Oh, Big Al from Parts Known. Thank you so much for your call. I don't know if we've heard from Big Al before. He might be a first-time caller, uh, Big Al specifically. Um, Mm -hmm. Remaking No Holds Barred, the Vince McMahon classic featuring uh, Zeus and Hulk Hogan, a.k.a. Rip, Rip Rip'em. Zeus for Hall of Fame 2021. A remaking Wait it. Wait a minute. Ooh, Why man, don't that... they? What if they put Rip in the Hall of Fame and it's a way to get around all of the weird shit that Hogan has done? <laughs> oh, blame it on Rip? No, 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 no. They're other way around. recording Rip, brother. That wasn't me. Or no, other way around where it's like, from now on, we're just going to celebrate Rip. Like Hulk Hogan is dead to us. But Rip, he's alive and well. Um... All right. Who do you make? So the question is, is what about Randy? But, but what about Randy? Does Randy ever walk again? We never see Randy walk. <laughs> Randy's in a wheelchair at the end of that movie. Yeah, he's, and it's not a big deal. He's paralyzed for life. <laughs> he actually, you'll never be me, little brother. Oh, gosh. Um, uh, oh, that's hard. So that, right, well, like let's I was do saying, it hurts my heart a little bit. Who's the rip it's character? such a terrible, such fucking a movie. bizarre. 
All right, who's the rip? Uh, <sighs> who's okay. the hero? Is it John Cena because that's the archetype? No. Okay. While while it is an archetype, yes. Apologies, I need to plug in my iPad. Hold on real quick. Uh, I'm still recording. I'd say we go a different route. Of yeah, we go the archetype, but we go let's let's go Roman Reigns, right? Okay. The newer newer he, version of the archetype. Newer type, uh, you know, different different type, like you know, following in the Rock's lineage, like the Samoan badass fighter guy. Yeah, I like it. We get a different setting. Okay, I know? like it. Maybe we make it. Maybe we make it island setting. You know, no island bard. No, that doesn't make sense. No holds barred. Um, so we go, we go that, and also we don't go the Vince McMahon archetype now either, right? With no. the the Kurt, the Kurt Fuller character right. being the. The, gr- the uh, money hungry corporate guy. Yeah, either we go like um I feel like we did Bischoff and Ray to Rumble, right? Right. Maybe we go Dixie Carter. Maybe oh, we, we okay. go like clueless Southern Bell. Yeah. D- Daddy's a billionaire and I'm just playing with his money and I don't really care what's happening. Okay. And then because who, that, that character doesn't fight anyway, they just have to be electrocuted to death at the end that there are no criminal charges for. Right. Right. Um, I like it. And then who is the who's the the big scary like jacked dude that he's got a face? All right, so we gotta take an actor who's like a big scary jack dude that can do that. But do do we immediately make it, do we make it that, scary? That's also, do we make it wait, scary? Wait, wait, I, Go ahead. Let, let me finish this uh, wonderful joke. So we take a big, scary Jack dude who's an actor who can't wrestle worth a lick. So obviously Nathan Jones. <laughs> yeah, that was worth that was worth the repedal for that. Um, <laughs> I got, you know, I got one that might be a little bit bizarre and weird. Sure. Hit me with it. Like a crazy old grizzled Hugh Jackman. Oh, just okay. like because he's just so scary when he's ripped, right? And he looks mm-hmm. like if he play, if he plays like an absolute madman, like he is like the unhinged, just like violent, like the same way Zeus was like he doesn't care about the game, he doesn't care about the sport. He's just there to hurt you, and he's just this big, scary, mean dude. And I and I am I'm even okay that he's like current age, where he's kind of older. He doesn't have to be like a young new guy. He could be like an older scary dude. And I feel like we we got to do one kind of nod that's a direct like add on to what it was while we're changing things. The Stan Hansen, right? Uh, oh yeah, we got to have the crazy role. hillbilly. Yeah, that's that's JBL. That's J- I just I was gonna say the exact same thing. It's gotta be yeah, JBL. it's gotta be. He's 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 already like modeled himself so directly in ring after Stan yeah. Hansen. Let's close line from and let him be the guy like, hey, where do I drain the lizard? Ooh, like, you know, just deleted scene after deleted scene. Get to hit the cutting room floor, but it's loaded on the DVD. I love everything about this movie that we've made. It's Who, pretty good. It's so wait, you we we said that it's going to be more of a Dixie Carter type, but we didn't cast it. Oh, good point. So who, point. who is going to be the Dixie Carter type who's kind of running shit? Annie Potts. Annie Potts. I don't know the name. She's, she, Annie, you don't know Annie Potts? Come Wait, on Annie now. Potts. Designing yeah, I know the name. women? I know the name. I don't know the face. Oh, okay, so you're going a little older. All right. I was going to go a little younger, but I like Dixie this. Dixie Carter is not younger. I know, but I was just going to do it for the sake of the movie. But no, Annie Potts is great, actually. Because she actually yes, looks uh, any box from Ghostbusters yeah, yeah. And, and she's Toy got Story. she's got the voice as well, and I think that she kind of has mm-hmm. that feeling where she she she'll stab you in the back pretty pretty easy. Yeah, she might be a little a little smarter than she lets on to be, you know. Right? Can I just throw one alternative out there for her? Absolutely, for Catherine O'Hara. She'd be great too, right? although. The only problem with Catherine O'Hara that I have is I never have any bad feelings towards Catherine O'Hara. She could act her <laughs> ass off and I'll always be like, okay. you're wonderful. That's fair. You know what? Fair point. Um, well, Big Al, 
Thank you for an excellent question. That's up there. That's up there in the Compadres Question Hall of Fame, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, thank you to everybody who called the hotline. Once again, that number, I scroll to it, 747-666-5606, 747-666-5606. Thank you for the first-time caller. I want, uh, listen, first-time callers, I want more. Keep coming. Keep hitting us. I want to I wanna hear some more voices. I love that New York accent. I want to hear what other accents are out there exist. I'm like a guy who's never heard accents before. That's my new character that I'm doing. <laughs> like what other accents are in the world, Scott? What part of the world was you born from? Um, thanks again, to everybody who called. We hope to hear more from you next week. Thanks, everybody who tuned in. Hey, Scott, tell, tell the folks a little bit about our Patreon. Oh, man. Our Patreon is loaded to the gills. It's busting out with content. It's, it's all hanging from the rafters. There's so much there. We've got Watch Along Wednesdays. We've got deep dives into other conversations. What's just going to include a conversation about Randy Orton and his thoughts on NXT uh, in this in the article uh, interview that he did with CBS Sports. Uh, it's got a bunch of stuff on there. Uh, so check that out. Go to our Patreon page. You can find that by going to compadreshow.com. The Patreon link is there. You can join up. You can get the pre-shows. You can get uh, other stuff. You can get discounts on uh, merchandise in the future. All of it's there. All of it helps to support the show, which uh, we're very grateful for anyone to do. Even just listening to the show is immensely grateful uh, during this time of everything being wacky and crazy. Uh, and uh, I'll get to another way of doing that in just a moment. But thank you to our all of our current Patreon Palskis. You're absolutely wonderful. AJ0314, Alex Pierce, Alice Raider, Andrea Beeler, Ballista, Brian Collins, Christine, Colt List, Gavin Provost, Gilbert Short, JD Monteith, Mast Llama, Matt Salgado, Matthew Beasley, Michael Beltran, Noe Cruz, Paisley Darts, Pete Garit. Ricardo Rosario, Tim Bemis, Tim Redbeard, and the soon-to-be Mrs. Redbeard, Tina Keys, Tom Hader, Tony Griggs, Troy Moretti, Ugly Aussie Weed, Vianney, and Zach Ayafuso. Thank you all so much. And another great way to help support this show, other than listening and telling a friend and doing all that, is uh, rating and reviewing the show on Apple Podcasts. We are uh, getting updates on them. People are doing new ones. That helps us out. It helps the push the show towards new potential listeners that are searching through and like, I need to find a good wrestling podcast. Well, new ratings and reviews will do that. If yours is older or you've never done it before, it takes you less than two minutes to do. And Jake, do we have some new rating and reviews that you want to read? Uh, uh, we have... Uh well, you said new. I was just going to read some old ones, but sure. Let's find. Sure. Uh, let's, I thought you said you had a new one too. Yeah, right? there's one new one in there. Let's. Uh, so this yeah. one comes from uh, Puckhead 47. That's P U C K. Uh, Puckhead. I'm sorry, 45. I have uh, numeral dyslexia. I apologize. Uh, it says, "Hey Oats, five stars. Uh, one third of aces and oats here. Big fan. Love you guys. P.S. Dale, what did you think of All In?" <laughs> outstanding um thank you so much for that puckhead 45 uh here's one this podcast oh so good from matter hatter no mad hatter with two d's 1084 so good five stars this podcast is for that inner child in you that can't get enough wrestling you can tell that the hosts really enjoy and have that passion for all things wrestling if you are into wrestling then you should listen to this podcast uh Clear and wrestling. to the point wrestling. Uh, thank you so much for that mad hatter. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Here's one. Uh, keep up the amazing work. Zero the hero spelt X E R O T H A hero. Five stars. Keep up the amazing work. Wrestling compadres is one of the funniest wrestling podcasts out there. Each episode puts a smile on my face wider than Baron Corbin's gut. <laughs> Man, see, we got to update these people. These are older. If, if, if that smile could be bigger than Cassius Ono's gut, that would be current. <laughs> That'd be a bigger smile. Uh, Robbie Vogler says, great listen, five stars. First time I've ever listened to this podcast, and I think it's going to be a part of my weekly podcast I listen to. Thanks, guys, and keep it up. You just gained yourself another listener. Well, Robbie Vogler, nice. this podcast, this uh, review was from two years ago, so I hope that you're still tuning in. 
Absolutely. Yeah, you know, listen, Compadres was established in 2014. That was six years ago. Um, this show has been on for a very long time. It's seen a, a variety of different faces and styles. And uh, and uh, for the most part, we've attempted to maintain the spirit of the show as best we can. Uh, with that said, some of these reviews are just so old, and we'd love to get some new people in there. Um, reviews that become a little bit more relevant. Hey, we 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 have we don't uh, we don't disparage our history. We love seeing people leave reviews about how great Carolyn was, um, and uh, obviously our love for Johnny Carlin. Uh, that's what I said, Carolyn. Uh, and uh, with that said, you know, uh, having reviews that represent what the show is now uh, are going to go a long way. Yeah, because hey, we keep working for a different Booker man every time. So, you know, we gotta we gotta keep up with the times. But yes, thank you to everybody for all your support in all the different ways that you do. And uh, uh you know, Mickey Bell from Gibraltar said it earlier. Uh we, we we appreciate you appreciating us still trying to continue on the show, being uh zooming and recording and doing all this setup and hope it sounds just as good as it normally would, uh being in person because I don't know. I don't know if Jake's ever going to convince me to get back in person again. You better. No. Why? Does it sound just as good, listeners, when I'm at home being comfortable it's with the It's not about the sound. It's about like our rhythm and like how the conversation and our rhythm, is stunted. And the conversation goes oh, and stunted. I hate everything about you. <laughs> if I could kill your face, dun, 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 I wouldn't fucking hesitate. All right. Um. Once I start singing, random I'm so shit, AEW and you're so NXT. Once you once I start ringing, singing random shit and making up lyrics to songs, you know it's time to go because I'm getting a little loopy. Please follow me on social media at Jake Lloyd on Twitter and on Instagram. What? Why are you laughing? Because the cat's meowing. The cat, the cat's mad. The cat wants to play pinball. All right. Well, listen, cat. You can play pinball in just a minute once I'm done doing my fucking plugs. All right, cat. Maybe stop stepping on my plugs, cat. Um, uh, he's, he's now showing me on Zoom the cat. <laughs> oh, oh, sushi pants. She's so goddamn cute. Um, what the She's fuck was I talking about? I was talking about uh, Instagram. Jake Lynn on Instagram. You can also, only watch it twice. Check out my feature film pinch available now for. Uh, purchase or rent digitally on Amazon free, totally free to Amazon Prime, Prime Video subscribers. Uh, pinch, go to pinchmovie.com for more information, some quick links, or head on over to Pinch Movie on Instagram. Hey, I could really appreciate, I could really use uh, your following on uh, Instagram, trying to help advertise the movie. It's, I'm a one man show here. It's up to me to get it out there. And, uh, you know, you know the way these social media algorithms work uh appreciate you throwing a follow you don't post very much at all but uh getting at pinch movie followers on us uh, uh, instagram would be fantastic boom just hit 80 right there bang uh yeah make it a double feature this weekend everybody watch i would hmm, what's the order uh watch state made a maze both three on amazon prime but what would you say close out with pinch Depends on depends on what you're. I mean, yeah, I think that's a. I, I think that uh, Dave Made a Maze is a fucking weird movie, and so if you need a palate cleanser from Dave Made a Maze for just some real life, um, you know, doing, then uh, then Pinch would be to give that. But if you'd like to go to bed with a zany mind, then do it the other way around. Yes, so Dave Made Maze is also available on Amazon Prime. Watch Pinch first, and then if you get a chance, watch Dave Made Maze. I love it, uh, for sure. The cat is biting the microphone stand. cat is super pissed off right now. Yeah, um, the, the cat is having like a full-on riot against you podcasting right now. It's like, it's two hours. Hit. It's time to fucking wrap it up, asshole. Oh, it's you're actually pulling off the plastic. It's in your mouth, dum-dum. All right, well, you go prevent your uh, cat from choking on plastic and dying. I will say to the listener, please follow Compadre Show at Compadre Show, Compadre Show.com for all the merchandise. Get your new Hey Oat shirt. Do all the things you got to do. Compadre Show.com. We love you. And uh, you'll hear from us in a week. No. Yes. Absolutely. Thanks for listening, everybody. That's entertainment. It's Dragon Wagon.